All right, class, it's a new week, and uh, we are learning a little bit about project-based learning this week. And so hopefully you've finished all the discussions and other uh, options for other th assignments for, for last week. This week, um, I did want to talk about a few things when the, there is the barriers to classroom technology use assignment for graduate students that is due this week. And I wanted to remind you to use more literature than personal opinion in this assignment. So yes, you can share some of your personal experiences with barriers to technology use in this assignment. But I wanted you to make it more about the literature, more about the things that you have been reading in class. And you shouldn't really have to cite more than what you've read in the class if you don't want to. You could look up additional sources and so forth, but um, talk about what it says in the literature. So yeah, we've been learning about possible barriers for teachers using technology in the classroom. Your assignment is to discuss at least five possible barriers to technology integration from the readings. And explain in detail what each barrier is and also discuss, is, discuss issues that teachers face surrounding each barrier. And then for each barrier that you mentioned, also discuss some possible ways that teachers could overcome this barrier. So again, the barriers themselves that you mentioned should be those from the literature. It should be something that you see that you've read about um, in the required assignments that you've been reading. And then, let's see, in addition to barriers to technology use we've read about in class, discuss barriers to classroom technology use that you may have been have experienced as a teacher. And so you can also share some personal experiences. But again, make sure you do cite that literature. I'm trying to get you into the literature and say, you know, this is what this study found are the barriers and so forth. All right, so discuss these five possible barriers, explain each detail in, in detail each barrier, and then discuss possible ways that a teacher could overcome each barrier. That's the idea. And it could be submitted as a different, you know, in different formats. It could be just a paper, about three to five pages with citations and a reference list. It could be a recorded presentation. Um, either way, though, you need to cite references at the end. And such as the one, one that can be created with PowerPoint or Screencast-O-Matic. It could be a storybook of sufficient length to cover the requirements. Be sure to include citations in a reference list or a podcast recording of four to six minutes. And that would also cite references at the end. So that's the assignment. That's for graduate students. And one, one source in particular that I think, obviously, I will be looking at to make sure that you... Um, are aware of it is, is this barriers to technology use in large and small school districts a reading for this week and that is because that's the one that I authored so I talk about that and the reason why is because it talks about South Dakota even though it doesn't mention it it says calls it a rural north midwestern state but it's South Dakota and that what that all of the findings from this study are recently published from our state and so those are the barriers that were found and, and how they relate to technology use. So you might want to use those barriers that are listed here as kind of your five, you know, the different areas of barriers and then go from there. There are five in that article. So and again the reason why is not because of my ego that I want you to, to cite that one particularly and pay real attention to that one but because it is from our state and it is recent and so it's the best source of information for our state anyway overall at this point in time I don't know I'm not aware of anyone doing a later study like that just in our state alright so that's the assignment I did want to talk about this concept of a digital divide we've we've brushed upon it a little bit in our discussions this week and in past weeks so the idea of the digital divide is that some students in your class have access to technologies at home, right? They have, a, uh, maybe they, have, they even bring a smartphone to school, or maybe they even have um, internet access at home. And it's no problem for you to ask those students to do some homework online when they get home. But other students do not. And that's called the digital divide, basically. There's a divide between two different types of students in the educational format or in the educational field. And so um, those who do not, it's generally because of a lower socioeconomic status, like they don't have, they may be in poverty or may not be able to afford a lot of devices or a lot of things. 
But it also could be for other reasons too. Poverty is not the reason for everything. I think we tend to think that it, it is, but it's not necessarily in this case. There could be just family restrictions or maybe religious beliefs against uh, the use of technology for those who are working in Hutterite colonies. You know what I'm talking about. Or they would know what I'm talking about anyway. Um, or it could be, um, yeah, it could be a whole whole number of different th reasons why some students do not have internet access at home, do not have devices or laptops or a computer to access the internet, even if they had internet. And so that's the digital divide, and that's a it's an important concept to understand whenever we talk about educational technology because. You have to understand as a teacher how many of your students actually can do this homework assignment at home and how many cannot, right? And then if they cannot, is there an alternative that can be presented for them to be able to do that? So that's the digital divide is what it's called. So anyway, for the activities this week, you're going to do some readings. And I already mentioned one of those. So t textbook chapter 2 and then this section as well, 113 to 126. It has to do with project-based learning. And then for graduate students only with no Pinterest post required, there's the barriers to te technology use in large and small school districts and integrating technology into K-12 teaching and learning. Current knowledge gaps and recommendations Excuse me for future research. So all of those are readings for this week. You're going to pin on the textbook this week. That will be your required Pinterest pin. And then there are two Tech Talk videos for this week that have been provided to us, thanks to Michaela and Megan. And they have created these on Spelling City and Bookopolis, some fantastic tools. And maybe those can be incorporated into your own toolbox for teaching and learning. So watch those as well and learn as much as you can about Spelling City and Bookopolis. And those are the activities for this week. Now I just did want to talk about a few concepts before we finish as well. So let's bring those up.